Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. Tonight is Monday, April 9th, 2018. And we're here tonight to discuss with the Finance Committee a little thing called the budget, which we do every time this year, which is always fun. <coughs> I see our moderators here tonight. Nice. Bob? All right. Which, which part of this do we want to tackle first? We got a number of things in here. Um, you guys meet last week. We did not have quorum. Okay. We had uh, Scott and I were there, and we did not have others, so we have not been able to have a meeting. So. Okay. I have the motions prepared. Um, with the uh, sources of funding preliminary, if you want to start there, and okay. yeah, on the fair. budget and the kind of go through those and hit, yeah, okay. <clears throat> and Chair, if I could, Mr. Chair, these, yeah. these match up with the uh, use of balance, uh, use of funds sheet, right? Thank you. I'll pull that up. So I have one. The only thing I made up. Yeah, <coughs> because I just got that one. Just got that one, but it's not, not a big number. Okay. And capital's pending, so. Right. All right. Well, maybe do our minutes first before we roll tonight. Get that out of the way. How about that? It's an easy one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <coughs> It was a light agenda, too, so. <laughs> Even easier. Even easier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any, uh, a motion on the minutes from last week? I'll move the, approve the minutes of last week. Mm. Sorry. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zip on last week's minutes. All right. Now on to the fun stuff. Do you want to start with the warrant articles and funding sources, or just a general dialogue with the Finance Committee representatives? to see if there's any initial questions. Yeah, we can do that first and then. Uh, okay. Probably mull over. Yeah. <coughs> you guys mulling over use of cash sheets? So what do you think? Yeah, yeah, we are. We're looking at, uh, at the, the stabilization numbers and the the free cash uh -huh. and the two. <clears throat> What's the general temperature over there? So it's out in one and in in the other, so that's why it may look a little. Is that what you're? Some. The out on the free cash side and the in on the stabilization side? Some of it is just. It's a little nerve wracking having it go down to 75. Yeah, well this is all preliminary. That's up to yeah. the board to decide where the, where it was what in. the funding source is. So. is. Is this going by a previous formula that we were using? So mm -hmm. much the stabilization, yes. so much the free cash. Yep. This is what leaves us with that? Yep, bingo. And if you look at that top line, Bruce. Yeah, I see it. 100, 160, basically 160, 300, heading yep. just to the budget. Yep. Just plug right into the operating. Mm -hmm. Same formula. Actually, with the OPEB, it's about 192,000. Right. So. Good point. And again, it is, it is a little light leaving uh, the year. We usually, we're in the 100 to 150,000 pushing forward. Uh, this year, we were a little rich in the receipts of free cash, a little over 500,000. And that's why the, the nice part about that noise is the formula moves with whatever you end up getting. Right. In, in, in the last two years, we, we've had what I've considered higher free cash yep. than normal. Yep. Yeah, so especially that's, last year. That so was that's, a real So that's because, you know, either the receipts are off or the, mm -hmm. or the spending is off. Right. So, you know, if we tighten that up a little bit, that's going to help out yep. both with the budget and Correct. the other thing. And with the stabilization fund, is there some reason we're saving that stabilization fund for something? Uh, I think you're seeing, if I could, I, Mr. Chair, I think yeah. you're seeing growth in stabilization because the town hasn't gone on a large debt authorization since the mm -hmm. building of the library, the school. Remember, wastewater is paid by wastewater users. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, a yeah. Big one. 
Um, and with the, this is now the third year of the capital stabilization yep. fund yep. being in place, you're actually seeing the benefits now with stabilization growing. We put money in by formula a couple of years, and right, right. we've only used stabilization the last two you know, full years for special town meetings to withdraw, and then we, we put it back but, in. But we have a big amount coming for, that you want to borrow for the fire truck. Correct. Plus the override. And when you look at this amount of but, cash that's in sure. total amount of cash available, sure. whether it's stabilization or free cash, you know, you're looking at between the capital stabilization the stabilization account in free cash of about a million dollars. Close, yep. And with respect to the stabilization, <clears throat> you wouldn't use that for an operating budget anyway. No, I realize yeah. that unless yeah. it's approved at town meeting. Correct. By two thirds vote. Well, you could do that, and then yes. you're, you're, you're in a hold becoming the. the but, 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 sure. in, and you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Exactly right. right. And I understand yep. that. But, you know, that stabilization money is there for, for purchases. I agree. And, to be honest with you, I think you're going to have a tough time passing two overrides. Agreed. I agree. We haven't we haven't talked about the funding of the fire truck yet, but we got asked. We, you know, it was asked to be put on. Because and it so was basically you were talking borrowing. Correct. For the last right. couple of right. meetings. So yeah. the machinations we haven't drilled down on, and you're right, that value or future capital stabilization to pay for debt percentage or the interest, or we haven't gotten to that point yet. But that's an active discussion, and then, there's, there's a lot of money there. Well, six hundred fifteen thousand dollars isn't necessarily a ton of money on an eight million dollar budget of three hundred and thirty million dollar town. But when you add those all up together, it's a million dollars there. Yeah, agreed. <coughs> Absolutely agreed, and it took ten years to get there. Oh, I, I realize that. I don't don't. I hear you. just can't look at the number in a vacuum. No, no, I get it. No, you have to, to look to, at the whole thing, right. but you have to realize there's a lot of cash there. Sure. Yep. Oh, yeah. And capital stabilization actually closing balance, depending on how it's spent, could be considerably less than that. Again, I, I realize that. Yeah, I realize that. That's Depends something that's fund you take the money out. Of. That's kind of dynamic and it's annual. You yeah. know, we're, we're, we're in a position here where by raising $110,000 this year and having some carryover from last year, yes. that, that again helps. But to, to Bruce's point, you're talking about a total of 9.3% 9, 9 of our cash reserves against the operating budget. That's a, you know, that's a, a position that Sunderland um, hasn't had in the past. That's true. <clears throat> I, I guess my, what, what I just like to, to ask to have a discussion mm -hmm. is that you can you you can use stabilization and, and of course you can use stabilization with free cash to balance the budget this year. Sure. Um, I I mean one one of the one of the reasons I I have a problem doing that is because of ending up with a seven hundred eight hundred nine hundred thousand dollar override, and people say well how we don't we have you know where did where did the money go. I, I guess I just have I just have a, a problem <coughs> with the fact that we right now um, there's there's three items this year <coughs> the increase in um, two additional students going to Franklin Tech six eight thousand so let's say it's seventy thousand yeah. um, South County EMS is up thirty six thousand. I'm just, and I'm going to say forty thousand just for, because it actually could have gone, it could have increased by a hundred, it could have increased by a hundred. So I'm going to say forty thousand. So right, those are a hundred and ten thousand, and the insurance is going up forty nine thousand nine hundred dollars. So say fifty thousand. So right there, we're we're pretty much at a hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Right. Those, and that doesn't count education or any of the other expenses that we had. Um. I, I think it's important for the Board of Selectmen to let the residents in town know is that right now we, we're spending we're, we're, we're spending more than we're, we're taking in. Um, and, and, and there's a lot of reasons for that, I, I think. One of the biggest reasons is that um, when, you, when you look at 
um, if you go when you go through the budget, someone said the other day when he when he's here listening to the uh, department heads, he can't disagree with what they're telling them for their increases. When you look at the increases this year, there's no real department that is going out out I would say an outrageous amount. We have to tr we have and we've been saying for the last few years that we need to we need a correction um, to bring it more to bring our revenue more in line with what what we're using. I I don't and again I don't know what I struggle. I, I agree. I struggle, Bruce, with with using stabilization to pay for reoccurring expenses. No, I, I think, I, and I, I don't think know everybody how to do does, it. Tom. I, 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 but I don't. So I, and I, so I, and I guess that's that's the discussion I'd like to have. I, no. I mean, you know, go, I, when, when we go through the budget, you know, and personally, I think we spend too much time go into this thing about how to pay for it instead of looking at what's actually in the budget. You know, when we look at the education component, um, I didn't see, I, I had a conversation with a member on the, on, on the school committee who I, for 20 years, valued, the, valued that individual's um, thoughts when it comes to money. Um, and and he told me that when he looked at the budget, he originally thought there was probably things that maybe you could save money, where save money. But after going through with a fine tooth comb, he really doesn't see where you're going to have that savings. Um, and I I trust that man. I tr I trust I I have for tw like I said I have for 20 plus years. Um, so then I, so that I keep I looking I go looking through there's there's not. Um, I, I think percentages are a hard number because everybody comes down to the town clerk. Oh, we've got the elections this year is going up thirty percent or whatever. Well, it's as off or on cycle. Uh, so per percentages doesn't. Right. Yeah, percentages doesn't yeah. to me doesn't mean anything. So I, I don't know. I'd, lo I'd love to have that conversation. You know, I, I you know is it better to spend down your 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 resources or is it better to, you know, so you would have a have renewable, reoccurring uh, revenue so that you can actually make plans and and you so if if we if we knew that we were going to have a reoccurring revenue, then you could look at the five hundred thousand dollars for the fire truck and say, well, we have six hundred thousand in stabilization. Well, we could take three hundred thousand dollars and apply it to that and, and just borrow, you know, two hundred and fifty or wh whatever the number is. But but how how can you say that if we say we don't have any re reoccurring you know we don't have that reoccurring revenue it's a tough it's tough. No, I understand. That. I, I no, I know. I just uh, I just need to I just need to say it. But what I'm saying is when you look at all that cash reserves. Yeah. The lay person out there, the voter, yeah. he's looking at that. That's a lot of money in the bank to be asking more from us. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's a that's a simplistic perspective. Very, I appreciate very simple, that. Very, very, simple. very ultra simple. Yeah. Again, I would I would I would say, Bruce, you, you you and we we have been at this long enough to recognize that those reserves can be used for some offset with respect to debt for the, for the large capital piece. We have we got to that discussion right. yet? Okay. Yeah. Not at all. I, it that, that and and I I think that's an interesting comment and and, it, and it's and it's um, interesting what our our. The local towns around us do the same thing. Um, if you look at Hadley, they have million in stabilization and millions in this account and millions in that account. And I can go even closer. To, I, I guess I go. I guess how, how many people in here have a water bill? Get a water bill. The last I knew, the water district had 1.5 million dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they still have it, but that sure. wasn't too long ago. The water district. Right. Had 1.5 million dollars, <throat> and they their total budget's not so. Do they have more? Is, are did they have too much money in their free cash or stabilization or whatever? What are they called? You know, they, they don't they don't have an eight million dollar budget like we do, but they got a 1.5 million dollars. And and I'm not, and again, it's not that that's considered good. Well, that's what helped us to get our bond rating up too. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, things. I mean, and and that's a different. 
organization. I mean, it's a, it's 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 a music, it's a public it's, it's a, a public, public utility. It's a public but utility. But it's the same thing with the with the sewer users fee. Plus, our water rates, even though they have that much money in the bank, our water rates are extremely sure. extremely low to, to, compared to other towns. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, our, and then when you how about our tax rate? Is our tax our, rate our tax rate is very competitive with other towns? You look at Hadley. Their revenue stream is so much different than ours yeah, exactly. because they get a ton of money from the meal tax. Right. Because they got so many restaurants there. Yep, absolutely. We 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 get a certain percent, you know, amount of money from that, which helps out. Sure. But you know, if we had ten more restaurants in town, we but, might not have the. But the does nest is open again. Well, I realize that. <laughs> oh, but, oh, does nest. We have high mean, hopes for the does nest. That, that's that's. What attract you know businesses and, and stuff like yep, that. Absolutely, we're a different <coughs> setup than they are. Sure. And, 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 and see, and I we all know that. And I agree with and see, and I agree with you. Yeah. And and, and I guess that's and and that's why and, and again that's why when I look at when I look at what we have re reserved, look when I first became a selectman, um, <laughs> there was someone that lived on uh, Silver Lane. Some call it South Silver Lane, about halfway where. Where <laughs> North Plain Road intersects, and he continually reminded me that the uh, we fought a revolutionary war about <laughs> taxations without representation. Um, Is that Walter? Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and, and 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 but I would I would say um, I would I, he, Walt, Walter would make 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 us think. And that was the greatest thing I thought, Walter. He would make you think. He, you know, he he come up with ten things. There were six things you throw right out. There was two that maybe, and there were two definites. But he always made you, made you think. And that's why, for us, at least for me, for when I look at free cash and stabilization, I've never wanted to have a lot of money, in, a lot of money in those accounts because I always felt that it was a challenge to 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 go to the residents and say, hey, you know, we got this amount of money. <clears throat> that being said, um, <coughs> I know six hundred thousand sounds like a lot of money, um, but when you have an eight million dollar budget, six hundred thousand get of uh, one fire truck five hundred thousand dollars. Well, that, that I mean, and we and, and we and we hadn't even tried saving for it, sure. and that's you know a uh, you know a highway. Uh, well, our last highway truck was two hundred. Two hundred and some, two hundred, yeah. two hundred something quite a quarter of thousand million. dollars. Over two hundred thousand dollars. And and but that's 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 unfortunately what we're paying for today. That, that, that was my point too about you can't look at that number in a vacuum because if you say oh that's a lot of money that's fine but you need to take that into account with everything else. Oh, I, I understand. Because otherwise that just throws out a false thing. <coughs> that says oh there's a lot of money and you really need to do the homework and look at all this stuff. Just perspective of what. Oh yeah. I don't disagree. Simplistic sure. approach. And sure. when we talk about our, our competitiveness or whatever, we've got this this list that we're going to be using. Um, it'll be at uh, the open house next Friday. Yeah, at the library. So that I definitely want to come to that. Like right now, we're number twenty seven on the list out of thirty one surrounding towns um, with the tax rates. So if we if we went with the override and what the numbers they show on here. That would gump bump us from 27 to number 25 out of 31. What's, what's, so we're what's Deerfield's tax rate? Deerfield is let's see, 15.95. So we would still be below Deerfield. Plus they have the fire district. Plus they have the. Uh, right. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. now, now, right. so, all right. So, right. so and, and I, you know, so, so this is that, only that, part I of guess the that picture. was my point because I was just talking to someone the other day in Deerfield about their tax rate. And, and they're telling me they pay almost a buck and a half uh, for their fire district, and that's rolled. It, that's in our tax. So ours is what fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Deerfield is fifteen ninety five plus the buck and a half for the district. Plus with all the industry and stuff that they have over there, they have way more commercial properties than we do. So, so you can see what a yeah. So yeah. can I su can I suggest that we have a, <coughs> we have not outside of the warrant motions in front of us. Hmm applied a path for the use of reserves yet with respect to either offsetting borrowing we haven't had that discussion yet i'd like to i'd like to take the opportunity to remind remind the residents who watch and people who come to these meetings that 
we built these formulas a decade ago to get to this point to be able to have this discussion. Right. And that's a really important thing to bear in mind. So we we're talking about a, a debt authorization this year, and we may have reserves to pay for part of it or offload it onto a debt schedule in the future. Those discussions, either from capital planning, the finance committee, or the board, haven't occurred. This is the first round of it. So it's important to bear in mind, we actually have a starting point, whereas in years past, we simply would have checked the box and said, not possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We have flexibility this year for the first time in quite some time. And, and that's a very valid point. Yeah. So again, the only, the only application of uh, funds right now we're talking about are going to be uh, the free use of free cash through the warrants and through the formula. What we took in and where it's been distributed formulaically. So we have basically two more weeks. Capital planning, capital planning is meeting tomorrow. You guys are meeting tomorrow. Yeah. To be able to you know, see what, what makes sense. The financial team meeting is Thursday at 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. That's with the accountant and with treasure collector, with some debt schedules, and we can start putting the pieces together to see what the best message to bring to the electorate is. That's right. a really important piece to bear in mind. And I, I would say, with some measure of pride, I'm glad we got reserves for the first time in a long time, that we can have the discussion. I think it's a great opportunity. It was a long struggle. It's a long to get struggle. Um, use of cash across the motions? Is there any, any reason we wouldn't start with those? So, uh, with respect to the use of free cash formula that we have, if mm. I could, Mr. Chair, yeah. and, and uh, yeah. Tom, that, you know, we have, with now the third year of capital stabilization, and using some money from free cash going into capital stabilization. Uh, one of the first times that I can remember ever having a revenue stream that's equal to or greater than the requests that have come in for capital. Now again, the capital team is meeting tomorrow, capital planning committee is meeting tomorrow. I would, I would, I would put forward that maybe in a future year, depending on how this uh, free cash trend, if it continues, that we look at the percentages that go to stabilization and to uh, capital stabilization. If it's truly a trend, we have two points now where that's been higher than forecast. Right. If it's truly a trend moving forward, maybe some of that can be used either for OPEB or for operating or more toward the warrants. But I think the one third formula for the operating budget is a commitment that this board's made to the electorate that it's not, we know it's not free cash. It's raised, it's not spent. We want to apply it to the budget. We don't want to hoard it. It's not the method. That's why the formulas were created. But if this pattern continues in another year, maybe the percentage that goes to capital can be moved down. And maybe the percentage that moves to the budget can be moved up. But we may have some latitude. We've been essentially at a third and a third and 20 and 10 for four full years now with the OPEB implementation. And that may be something that's a dynamic and can be reviewed when we get through this budget cycle, especially carving up what's essentially a volatile revenue stream. We don't always know what the heck it's gonna be. And when it's big, you know, you go, oh, well, these subsequent numbers and reserves tend to grow. Uh, these numbers and reserves can diminish in the future if that, if that squeeze comes closer, if those percentages come back down to earth a little bit. And I think maybe we might have to relook at the formula too. Yeah, that's because, the point. Because we yeah. did not have the capital stabilization yep. fund exactly when we had this. Yep. yep. And so the capital stabilization fund can be taken a percentage of that. Yep. Capital that regular stabilization fund. Yep. Because that's it's like a double whammy into stabilization. Exactly right. No, I completely agree. You're, you're echoing my point. By looking at those percentages, take some more away <coughs> from capital stabilization yeah. and redirect. And if paring the budget yep. down, getting yep. that. Thing down to go to the operating budget, you know, tighter budget. Completely agree. Yeah, and you always want to periodically review your formulas anyway. Yep. You can't just put them yeah. there and then yeah. walk away and exactly. say, oh, we're done. Yep. I completely agree because with that. You get yourself in a mess. But this this is the second year where we've been 500,000 plus in free cash through a whole host of things. And some of it's been money not spent. In Normally it's a couple hundred thousand. But dollars. About 350. Right. Yep. Yeah. So again, we get one more year and go, huh. Okay, 
I, I would take a chunk this? of last year's mm -hmm. as an aberration, but there's still, I mean, yeah. so it's a little tough to right. figure out, but I think we can probably right. say it's around this year's right. rate. Because I think you'd need at least three to, to say, all right, we've got a pattern right. here. But wait, wait for the recession. Then we'll all be looking back going, Jesus, weren't those yeah. the good old days? Yeah. No, I said there's always one, Bruce. You know it happens. Um, with respect, <coughs> with respect to the, with respect to funding the warrant, right? I see operating budget at 160, stabilization at 32, capital at 53. Where are the warrants? in the use of free cash. Are we going to decide that tonight? No. So can we get that dialogue going with respect to yeah, input definitely. from I'll the folks in the room? stuff in there for food for thought yep. kind of stuff. Yep. <laughs> that's your, your call. I think that's a good idea. So so we know Article Article 1 is pretty straightforward. It's towns and reports. Yep. Right now, again, we're talking about the motions right now. The warrant is out. We, we have historically raised and appropriated elected official salaries. Those have not increased. Right. <coughs> no reason we do that differently this year. That's raise and appropriate. We have Article 3, which is, the, which is the operating budget. And this is a little more wordy this year because we had to include the input from FCAT, from right. PEG Access as a revenue stream so that we can appropriate it in the budget. Yeah, it's in and it's out. It's right. Yeah, it's the, the peg one that's just transferred. So the value, the value of free cash that we're talking about is currently one ninety two seven ninety eight. Yep, got it right there at the end. And so that's one use of here. That's up between the two. That's the operating budget and peg access. The moving of stable moving of free cash to stabilization is the next article under Article Four. That's the fifty-three thousand that's on the use of cash sheet, right? Yeah. That's right here. Yeah. And that's just as part of the formula. Yeah, exactly. Just moving it from free cash to stabilization. <coughs> then you have the moving from free cash to capital stabilization. The peg access is listed, so it's coming in and then going back out in the operating budget. That's yeah, that's paying back from last year. Right. We had that right. Yeah. So it's making it whole again. Okay. Then a capital budget, which again is not recommended as of the capital planning committee. That's tomorrow. We'll bring that forward for our next agenda. That's this. Yeah, the capital exactly. Some, some some of those some of those are recommended as of last our last meeting, and the remainder are to be reviewed and rec reviewed and discussed. Not always recommended uh, going forward. It's like three hundred thirty six thousand this year total. Three twenty four. Three twenty four. Yeah, we took the uh, park project out. And, yeah. The CPA funds out. Will we be discussing those tonight? Yeah. Some of those tonight. Sure. Okay. I think it's important yeah. to have capital yeah. involved tonight. Yeah. And the next piece, eight, is, you know, do we actually appropriate, raise and appropriate through some measure, right? And I think the, if I could, Sherry, <coughs> the, the phrasing from council is that this is appropriate, including the potential to borrow, including, you know, whatever funding source we choose. So even though there's a ballot question that's on the ballot, the value of that is, is got to be determined. Right. Got it. So we're not asking the electorate for the full ride of 536 as a as yeah, a you just as a debt no, exclusion. Just that's just a placeholder. Got it. Right. Until I know. Yeah. Next is <clears throat> CPA. Oh. Ten is CPA. Eleven is CPA. Then revolving is 12. It's a school committee request for 8,000 from capital stabilization for some rolling stock. I listed both because nothing's been voted at right. this point. Right, okay. No funding sources yet. 
14 is classification study. That's a use of free cash, straight from free cash for a warrant article. Is that here? No. Classification okay. study? Yep. Uh, near the bottom. Article. That's article 13. 13. No, I'm sorry, 14. 14. Oh, the numbers oh. are off. You know what? The numbers might be off because I added the fire truck article. So I'll oh, fix yeah. that. But it I'm, is there. It's listed as 13, but it should be 14. 14. Got it. Yep. I'll fix that. 18,000 for free cash for snow and ice. That's article 15. And that's the final number. No bills coming in. Yeah, we'll check with Brian on Thursday, but okay. I think that's the final number. $500 request from the North Sunderland Cemetery for uh, maintenance, right? some maintenance money. Again, from free cash that's on here. And then Article 17. Aggregating electricity article, which we'll have to get the folks from the COG in here to talk about that. It's not a money article, but it's an adoption of a statute. And we, that it's important to have a clear, a clear path about that. I believe they'll be at the uh, meeting on Friday, the okay. 13th this week, okay. and Jim Barry to discuss that as well. 18 is a piece of work on Garage Road, kind of a transfer to allow for the complete streets work. Right, and the owner has signed off. Um, yeah, we so have the plan. Yeah. We're just waiting for the. Is that coming down the hill? Yeah, on the left. Where, where, on the right, I'm sorry. Where, where, the, uh, where the pigs are in the ground, yep. the stakes are in the ground? Yeah, okay. yep. there's a little bit of yep. survey yep. lines. Yep. 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 And that's all that that was. No contention there, just uh, going through the process. Right. And then a citizen's petition is 19. Mm -hmm. And then consent articles. So from a money articles perspective, the use of cash, we have the appropriation for the, raise and appropriate for the operating budget. The transfers, formulaic, or that can be an area of discussion. And then one, two, three articles are being funded from free cash, one of them being snow and ice deficit. So the biggest piece is gonna be of free cash that's not part of the formula used for the for the warrant is snow and ice deficit of 18,106. That seems like a yeah. You know, in, in the in the in the grand scheme of things, 18,106 for this winter is not a it not seems like bad. it's forever, but that's not so bad. Yeah. Dump it wasn't that long it was over 100,000, right? I, I it, like 3 years in a row. Right. I and and I mean, we added a little. We added a little to the uh, the materials and the, the overtime. Material. I mean, we're allowed to go up a little, but that's all we've gone up. But we didn't go up. We didn't go up. Right. But I, I would, you know, and and I, I know I'll get in trouble with this with certain segments of this population, but it's not a bad thing to tell people when they did a good, do a good job. I think George has done an excellent job. Mm -hmm. You know, I wrote. I mean. I work at the university. I, I hear people come in that, that uh, comment about the roads in Sunderland versus some of the surrounding uh, communities, how they're always, you know, passable and, um, you know, maybe they're not bare like the state roads are as soon as the state roads are, but they get they get pretty well done. Pretty I, And I, I don't think it's a bad thing to tell George and the highway guys that they did and they do a wonderful job. It's, a, it's been a tough year. Some, too. some people, some people take exception with that in the community. They don't like to hear mm -hmm. that we actually do some things well. We're down a man too. Oh, that's, that's right. Good part yeah. of the winter, while, so yeah. we did do a good job. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also been one of those years with erratic temperature swings, which, as yeah. anybody who's driven on the roads knows, what that means when it comes to potholes. So, it's been a tough year for those. So, so with respect to the with respect to the, <coughs> to the warrant and the motions. It seems like it's a it's a historically appropriate use of uh, free cash and raise and appropriate. I think again to the earlier discussion, we have to figure out collectively. We have to figure out how we're going to go about funding the debt service for the fire truck. Right. I, if if there's if there's discussion in and around the fact that we have a structural operating deficit of one hundred ninety two thousand four ninety eight, and we're asking for a two hundred thousand dollar override, I'm happy to have that discussion. Yeah, I mean that's that's operating money on a recurring expense for a recurring revenue stream. Right. 
overall, uh-huh. if we're going to be, or, I'm sorry, are we uh, moving to that discussion now? Yeah. Yeah. Chairs meeting. No, I think we should, yeah. Because okay. we're going to have to at some point, so we may as well just yeah. dive right in. Because <clears throat> if we are going to have to, I mean, we're going to be borrowing to have that. I mean, it would make sense to do more of it. Like the rates just seem like they're as low now as you're going to get for your. They're only going up. The yeah. Fed's already said that they're going to do at least one more um, rate change of a like you know mm-hmm. just this year a small like basis point like twenty five basis points again. Yeah, they're going to go up seven point seven five this year. Right. By so the time we're done, and that's planned. We, so. we you know we might be in the two percent range at a municipal yeah. level at a borrowing. Right. But again, there, there's, there's, if I could, Mr. Chair, there's a hybrid opportunity here between using some of the reserves right. and borrowing the balance or using the reserves to pay for the debt service over the course of, it's something we've got to work the mechanics out. Right. I, I know this discussion's been held before, but as far as the fire truck purchase goes as a whole, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a ton of money. Yep. To be spending on a piece of equipment. Sure. And I think the fire departments in the area collectively have to start looking at sharing the equipment. Actually. And the only way that's going to happen is to not buy you know, the equipment and force them to, to do it. And that, that's the biggest issue I have because. Mm-hmm. This, the same thing's going to happen in another 15 years. Right. You know, some committees or some organizations are going to say that fire truck's outdated. Yep. Just like the police, the guns are outdated. It's the same thing. Is it really outdated or is it someone saying it's outdated? Good point. And, and you know, the fire department does a great job. They, they all do a great job. But, you know, we have the same truck five miles up the road in Amherst. Sure. We got the same truck over here. And to be honest with you, how many people in town can respond to a fire mm-hmm. on a Friday afternoon? Good point. You know, it, it, it's, it's getting to that crucial point where we have to start very seriously looking at that. And I think Tom knows that. I think we all know that. Right. We, uh, I, yep. I, 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 you know, I, we I, talked I, about I, this I, before. I, I'm, I'm, gonna tell you, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what, what the the evolution, okay? Uh, and and I, I'm gonna tell you, 10 years ago we started, and, I and, and, and Bobby Hearn was actually yes. part, of the, part, yes. part of the discussion, but but it, you you have to find a willing partner, let's put it that way. Um, and we started talking 10 years ago about um, things that we could do with a, with a police, fire, EMS. Um, I would I would tell you that ten years ago, that we that there was a few towns that would were talking about looking at doing something with fire, and I, I'm saying there was a few towns right. that chorus is growing, um, and 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 from from people that we that we have an ongoing relationship with that chorus is growing. Um, I, I'm not saying it's going to happen next year or the year after. It may maybe. You know, 15 years from now, that's when it's going to happen. But there's actually been positive. There is one town up north, f- north of us, that that you would never. Right. I mean, I mean, you drew a line in the sand that they would not cross. They're actually their board of selectmen's actually talking about it, exploring. It, let's put it that way. So something will happen. Something will happen. Um, I I I just know that we we can't continue to. A, we don't have the people, as you said, that, that come. Um, I, I personally, if I had my, my vision, my vision would be a station that's manned 24-7 uh, with a truck. And each three or four towns would also, we'd still keep our same, uh, we, I would call them call firefighters, volunteers. They would still have a fire station in each town. Each town would say, you know, what what they would designate as a as their primary need for for attack equipment, and when the call came in, that main fire station would they would de- they would deploy the their, the first truck, and the the uh, alarm would go out, the tones would go out, and then 
Sunderland, Deerfield, Whiteley, whoever's in the group, their call firefighters, volunteers would go to the station, pick up the truck there, and respond. So you'd have two, two vehicles almost instantaneous there. That, that would be my vision. I, I know it just, works. Just regionalizing the assets. I mean, it's, I, I it's, it's it been discussed. Right. Bruce, yeah. I know it works. Well, I, in, in I, with it's, South but, County EMS, it works. But, but, but in, in, and it took a long time for that South County EMS to evolve. It does. I mean. It's, it's still evolving. Peter remembers when we had a volunteer <coughs> ambulance service, huh? and it evolved into a pay ambulance service, then it kept going. Yep. Oh, and remember, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's taken 30 years to get where we are. I, I, I think but I, I think, think it'll happen. I, I think in, in I think you have to start looking at it and say no <coughs> to some of this stuff and then it moves it along a little bit more. Yeah, that raises a good point. And it has to do with one of the things that stuck in my mind about the study that was the foundation for the South County EMS model was the, the deploying of assets and a response time. Yes. Based, and yes. It's pretty right. easy, right? You look at it and you go, okay, Tom, it's, it's, not, it's not unlike the discussion about, you know, central central uh, heating districts. Again, uh, again, it can be you done. You can map it out. It can see. be done. So to your point, Bruce, about, and <coughs> about, you know, how many assets do we have to have in and around the valley for, you know, the total population, the total infrastructure, we have a lot of duplicity. There's no doubt in my mind about that. It's not a news broadcast where you don't see a fire, and God forbid there are still fires. I totally understand that. And you look at the amount of assets that show up, and it's like, damn, <laughs> that's a lot of trucks and people. And, and I and, and I would say, Bruce, right right now, um, the the older truck was, I think, is an 83, 82, 80, something like that. Um, it's probably getting towards the end of its life. It's getting towards its end of its life expectancy. Um, I would say if you bought if you bought a truck now, it's going to take over a year for the truck to be built. So you don't you don't see the truck for the year. Um, but what happens is 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 as it is right now, probably um, for the next five to seven years, we'll have two frontline vehicles. But then what what will happen is that our new truck that's we bought in the nineties. <laughs> The ninety, what ninety nine, two thousand, whatever it was, that that slowly growing, um, more obsolete. Let's say not obsolete, but more obsolete. Um, so then we'll we'll be what we're what we are now. We'll have one, you know, one front line and one almost front line, and that's probably what will happen. Um, I we don't we don't we don't have a lot of auxiliary equipment. In our fire department, on the whole, not so. I, I don't know that they actually had a fire on the truck. What's yeah. that? Here, it was an electrical fire. Yeah. yeah, but still, I mean that that bodes pretty poorly for for the future. Yeah, use of that asset. Yeah, sure. Because if that's happening now, right. then it's it shows that it, it's a it's a big sign that it, this is something that needs to be. Replace, and I think that's. I mean, that's a liability to firefighters. If like, <coughs> we've got. I I I I, Ellie, I I'd love I'd love to I'd love for somebody to say let's start talking about. They find three we, willing people here. I so. I'd love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we I think we'd have a. Yeah. I think I I think our service would be greatly improved. As a matter of fact, maybe there's some way it can roll EMS and the fire service together. I, I would I'd be willing to discuss that also, but um, I I but I I think one thing we have learned what we have learned in South County is that we do better when we work together, yeah. and I think we're ahead of the the head of the curve on that one. So as far as the the warrant article at hand and the five hundred thousand, mm -hmm. figure out yes how. But, how to break that up? Seems like that's not. <laughs> well, there's Seems there's like there's that. Uh, you don't you don't have a recommendation from the capital planning committee yet. There's not, not a vote there until until tomorrow. There's an active tomorrow. discussion. Well. It's also important to bear in mind this is the second time this has been submitted, and the first time it was submitted last year, yeah. we only had the one bid. And we're like, oh, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> Sorry, right. chief. Go back again. Now we're up to two bids. The specs have changed, and so again, there's an active discussion around this. I think if I could uh, globalize this or go up maybe to the 5,000 foot mark, mm -hmm. there is a discussion between debt service and the operating overhead, uh, operating override. And I think 
the operating override discussion is is of greater import personally speaking is of greater importance because it's a structural you're not replacing an asset you're trying to correct the structure you're trying to correct a structural deficit in the operations of the town i think that's that's a, a more lively discussion we can all talk about trucks <laughs> right we are you know that's easy i get that i really do but when you look at the budget request that's in front of us there's really only a couple of new areas one of them happens to be in, in our world. This is the selectman's line, and that's <coughs> uh, technology line. We've increased by thirteen thousand dollars. We can talk to that at length, uh, and then the remainder we've talked about during the budget presentations, and we've squeezed those departments, and we've used the free cash. And again, I want to say that we've got uh, the formulas in place. Last year, we asked for a $300,000 override in anticipation of a $300,000 gap. We have effectively a $200,000 gap this year, and I think that's through due diligence in the administration, on, on Sherry, the administrator's part, and the department heads due diligence to keep their spending and their requests down. That said, it's still a $200,000 gap. I'd like to say we're $100,000 better than our forecast, but it's still a $200,000 gap. That doesn't change. If we go for, and as has been placed on the ballot, a $200,000 request, we have to ensure that this ballot question and the article match up. That's fine. What kind of budget do we want to put forward? Do we want to put together a contingent budget? If we have a contingent budget and the override fails, we go back to town meeting. That's important to bear in mind. And if the override fails and we go with a contingent budget, we come from other sources, whether they're reserves, or their reductions. That's kind of the path that's in, that's laid out with all of this paper. Sounds a little familiar. Well, I mean, we've been there yeah. before. Yeah. It's pretty similar last year. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I don't ever want to repeat 2009. No. So, is is it the you know? Sherry and I were having a conversation today on the phone about the recommendation from council about presenting two budgets, two budget articles, one with, one without. Um, we used, yeah. used to do that, Alan. We used to do that, didn't we? No. But didn't we have the budget was contingent upon contingent the override? Contingent. contingent. Then contingent. the override didn't pass. Contingent, then it would, and if it didn't right. pass, you had to come back. Think right. Yeah. So it's the same animal. Town council said put two budgets together. And present two budgets and with an initial an initial conversation again this is not the board this is me and the administrator yeah. was like <laughs> that's a lot of work for a lot of confusion yeah yeah that is it's tough enough, enough to right. get present through with one, one. Right. <laughs> and get right. everything everybody in the same page. I, don't, I don't know what, whether city or, or town is doing that in the commonwealth but <laughs> if their lawyers are if, if their town council is advising them to do that then they must have a good staff yeah <laughs> I, I know I was in a pre I was in a pre bid meeting today. We talk about cost, yeah. And my my deal a lot with pipe, and with the talk of the tariff, yeah. uh, sure, yeah. pipe pipe prices U.S. domestic have already increased by eighteen percent mm -hmm. just by talk of a tariff. Yeah. <laughs> and I had two vendors today tell me that their pipe costs can only be guaranteed for ten days. Correct. Because of the. Mm -hmm. yeah. Question. Yeah. I, I just wanted to something that I hear you talking about our reserves and yeah. whether they are appropriate amount or sure. you know seem rich. And the only thing that I haven't heard mentioned that I will toss into the thinking pool here is that uh, I think we're just in the process of having a survey, an audit of all of our buildings. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Which is. Um, I would be really, really surprised that that didn't come up with a long, long list of capital needs over, you know, short term, medium term, long term, whatever. Yep. Right. And even though I understand that part of what they're going to provide us is sources of possible outside funds, mm -hmm. various ways you can get them, grants or other, you know, matching things or who knows what, that there's still going to be a need uh, for uh, basically investments by the town to maintain our buildings 
that we really haven't been dealing with in recent years or in any years that I can remember. Right. And so I look at the you know, I look at the money that's in stabilization in particular and I say, boy, that's awful rich. And then I look at the kinds of things that you know are coming and it's like, yeah, yeah thank goodness. Not so okay. rich. Okay, and thank goodness and don't be thinking, great, grab it and dump it into the operating budget because, you know, the whole point of what you guys are doing in setting up this process to audit the buildings, you know, it doesn't do any good if you don't actually then have the resources to follow up on it. Okay. And it's, again, back to, you know, to me it's a useful comparison always to think about what do you do for the town versus what do you do for an individual taxpayer here, okay? And any individual taxpayer, obviously, in trying to figure out their own budget, also is dealing with how do I keep my house together? How do I keep, you know, you don't fix the roof when the roof needs to be fixed. You're just going to get a lot more expensive stuff down the road. And so, you know, like the town, they look for the cheapest, you know, the best and cheapest way to do it. Okay, and the town is no different. The town is looking for who can we get to help, you know, help us pay for this stuff. You know, and who can we get, you know, we're already in the process of getting the expert analysis of what needs to be done. It's not all going to be need to be done in year one, right. but it's not going to be trivial. And it's going to be ongoing and it's going to be... You know, from in, in my sense, the first time really that we've ever, you know, faced up to, you know, the serious needs for just maintaining our building stock. Okay. And so, I don't look at that 600 or whatever it is in stabilization and say, great, that's money that we, you know, is just sitting there, you know, whatever. It's like, boy, that's gonna, we're gonna be so glad to have that, mm -hmm. okay, as these building needs get real. Well, that's an echo of what we're hearing nationally yes. of maintaining, you know, our, your infrastructure. our infrastructure. And it's not exciting and it's not fun, but you got to do it. I mean, unless you want to live in a, in a, you know, a town in a country that's crumbling. Right. So anyway, I just hope to keep that in mind. Yeah, no, that's a, that's, that's that's a good thing. Forefront of my thoughts. Yes. And, and of my thoughts. you know, we, we talk about, you know, applying funds to offset like the budget i mean that's kind of why one of the reasons why we're switching our medical plan is mm -hmm. because it was we kept applying it and sooner or later it ran out and now it's got to go up and it's it's not a uh, while it might work in the short term it's not a viable long-term solution for it um so with respect to the warrant is there a discussion around the warrant motions application of Funds. I mean, we're not applying a lot out that's outside of the budget. It looks like a total of twenty nine thousand, which is repaying repaying the town from a prior author authorization, mm -hmm. and then five thousand for a classification study, eighteen thousand for snow and ice, and five hundred for North Cemetery. Those are the only uses of cap uses of cash on the warrant. The, remember the CPA monies are town appropriations but that's the CPC process. Those monies exist. They're coming from CPA through the CPC recommendations. They need to be appropriated by the town, but that's not on, uh, effectively, it's not on uh, raise and appropriate. It's not part of the operating budget. That has a separate revenue stream in reserve. A CPA, CPC, as far as the warrant articles. Do you, do you have a warrant? I just see a, an article on here for the uh, money to be spent in capital stabilization. Uh, I think capital budget we're going to be presenting. I think Peter, the format is to yeah, present a capital have. budget, and I believe it, it is. It's going to be Article Seven. You just see the sums or sums of money. We have to plug the values in after the, after the capital plan. Okay. Yep. 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 Moderator, anything jump out at you? Clean and yeah. smooth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, just a couple of things to uh, note. The budget reflects a 2% COLA. The mm -hmm. personnel committee, I put that in there kind of as a placeholder. Uh, the personnel committee had voted to recommend a 3%. So I need to have your recommendation on that. 
was the, if I could ask Mr. Chair, was the personnel committee aware that we were raising the contribution for? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing, there's a couple of um, outstanding contract there negotiations contract, that we'll need to plug in. Good points. We have the chief of police as well as the town administrator's contracts that are in, in negotiations. So we can have those, certainly those recommendations for our next meeting. Okay. Thursday at 10. Okay. Then we got some input still on the way. Yeah. Yeah. So. You want to take time if there's anything else with respect to the motions? If not, do you want to talk about uh, the capital request draft that we have in front? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Tom? See what we've got. Anything else to cover? What's that, subscribe? Um, you, want, uh, you want to talk about the capital list that's in front of us that's being requested? I, 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 Scott. I, at some point, I, I think we need to we need to address the uh, the override question. Okay. I, I think you know our in in our and because unless unless you're going to look at that hundred ninety two thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars, are we are you going to try to do it just through the override or are you going to try to look at what? Um, Using some of the money from other funds. Um, we're you using know, right. I, I mean, I mean, it, 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 and 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 so right now you have uh, fifty-three. Well, you might, when you go through your thing, you're looking at uh, one hundred sixty thousand dollars being added to the capital stabilization. Yep. Do we do that? Or. Or do you and, and or do you take that hundred and sixty thousand dollars and you you leave the formula that served us served us well over the last couple of years and you take that hundred and sixty thousand dollars and apply it towards the uh, the shortfall? If yeah. someone gone through last year's budget to see where the excess funds are coming from, is it from underestimating revenues? We're actually having that discussion Thursday. You are. Yep. I think that's very important yep. to look at. Right, because you want to see the because source of that. If you, can, if you can reduce free cash next year down, say, 100000 200000 mm -hmm. you get a tighter budget, mm -hmm. you know, there's a reason the free cash is there. Yep. Either, either one, you're not spending as much money, yep. or you're getting more money in. Correct. And, and I think that has to be looked at very, very closely to see if you can make that deficit come down some. Our right. estimates are conservative. So. Right. So that's something that we. Can right. We've always tried to be conservative. We, in our estimates. Well, I do, and and I and I will tell you that when when we we look at we look at our <coughs> when when they look at the uh, the revenue that that we generate, I mean, um, we've always been pretty conservative <laughs> with with our with our thing, yep. um, and that's typically where our ex, that's where our money comes comes from you know just past year and and people buy cars right uh, so it's twenty five dollars on a thousand that comes That's to done. that comes to, to the the town well we last couple two or three years people weren't buying buying new cars you know right so uh, now the state the state does that it's interesting. We we just talked with uh, Steve Cool the other day. Last was it last week? Last Thursday? Last Wednesday? About uh, capital gains and what they do with capital gains now in the state. They used to just put all that month capital gains into the reoccurring. Now they say, whoa, right. we don't do that anymore. So, so the state's now taking half half of the projected capital gains. And putting that into the rainy day account, it's, it's, kind it's, of what we're doing. It's, it's opposite of what what right. your initial response was. They did not put it in rainy no, day. No, I know they, they got caught in that a couple times. Exactly, times. they simply <laughs> used it as, oh, part, yeah. as a revenue stream. Yeah. It was like, well, yeah. what happens when it goes away? Yeah. So yeah, the formula they, they they took a formula. I like to say they I'd like to think they stole a page from Sunderland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> took that noisy revenue stream and made it formulaic, and so you're going to distribute it this way. But so, it, 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 you know, typically, like you were saying, our free cash at, at the end of the year is mm -hmm. usually between like fifty, two, three hundred thousand. Yeah, right. And then all of a sudden, for the last two years, it's up there. And sure. the one year was an anomaly, a yeah. couple hundred thousand. But right. there's something that we have to look at where it is and try to figure that out, because mm -hmm. that's 
That's the difference in the budget. Sure. Not so we had a we had a we had a free cash analysis that was done last year over that seven hundred. We're having the same analysis that's done this year this Thursday. So you guys should have that for your next meeting, next week's meeting. Yeah, because we want to understand that too. Exactly. Yeah, it's because important it's, to understand that. It's a big input to the budget. So Tom, to, to your point, uh, earlier point, I'm I am I am uh, firmly in the camp of keeping the full two hundred thousand on their contingent and recognize that we have had uh, budget growth in the last uh, three years. This is the first year, actually, it's been above 3%. But even at that 3% mark, a 2.5% growth of um, raise, to be able to raise and new growth in the town haven't kept up. Now, I appreciate the value and uh, the discussion about how does free cash get generated. I think it's really important to bear that in mind. That we, we've gotten to this point by taking time to understand how we, you know, create the expense side, where the revenues come from, and it's become predictable. That's been comf that's really comfortable to go to town meeting and say, and we can defend it because here's years of history that show it. I do think that we have years of history that show us now uh, with 300 last year, 186 the year prior, nearly 200 this year that we have to have that discussion and it has to be on the tax rate or else it's not really recurring. Right, well, that, right, and then we're stuck in that situation. And there's three years, there's a definite trend right. there right. in terms of the pattern. And 200,000 right now, uh, $200,000 leaves effectively the budget that's been uh, requested and reviewed and in some cases trimmed. Trimmed, yeah. Just trimmed. Right. Um, again, with respect to initiatives, we're taking an opportunity on insurance to expand our percentage because we're saving on changing the carriers, right? right? And then the rest is a continued reduction in debt, an education, our total commitment to education. Again, totality, we could have three kids go out of tech school next year and it's down to $200,000. Right. We don't know. And we've also got some debt rolling off in the next couple of years. Debt will be rolling off two more budget cycles. Right. Both the library as well as the public safety go off in two more budget cycles. I think that's something to keep in mind. If we're able to have that roll off, mm -hmm. then it puts us in a little better position. It, it puts the rate in, in a position. It, doesn't, right. it does not help the operating budget. It's right. important to bear that in mind. That's excluded debt. So the rate will drop by its direct proportion. But it doesn't change the fact that you could go this budget, this this budget next year is going to be five percent underfunded. Right. It's right more, now it's two percent underfunded. It's more for the people who focus solely on the tax rate. I understand. So uh, by having it be contingent upon, our fallback is we have some reserves. Well, I I, I guess I, I guess Scott, what I what I would said I I, I would ask everyone that that. To, been involved when they look at the budget mm -hmm. when when you look at the budget yeah are there areas that they think that we're overspending that's a good question well it's well i know I mean, and, and i think that fair, you, that, yeah, that's where you start yeah. you, 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 and, and again i'll i'll, I'll, I'll say that the, the, the statement to me that was made is that when they when they hear the department heads come in and talk they said their their budget so sound reasonable right good point okay and, and a guy and again there's a guy that's been around the bit around this thing room for a long time it says, well, they all sound right. So, so the first thing you have to do is you have to go back to your expenditures and say, is there some place that we need to, to look at again to, to come up with a better, sure. the better numbers, right? Because, because if, 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 and I, I think that's a, a key point, because if you, if you go through this budget and, and you don't find areas that you're concerned with that, or that you think are being overspent, then we really should be funding it, renew, you know, Year after like year, that, with reoccurring sustainable way, right? Susta sustainability. Yep. Now, I don't see one time in in this budget that we have right here. I don't see one time expenses, except for elections. Yeah. Good point. And those, and those I, are periodic. So, so when you go when you go through the budget, do you, do you, I mean have you have you when when finance can be looked at? Do you guys find areas that you think we should hammer down on some more? I mean, to be honest, there. are are some things that I, I I would have even thought that are being trimmed that that felt like I know that the the library folks 
Yeah. They had been lobbying for a long time to have some pretty marginal increases for staff that work really hard. And just to get here, we're having to cut away at there. So it feels very difficult to be able to, to, to be looking at this and saying, it, it ties it back to the questions you kept, you, you've kept bringing up are, it's just what kind of town do we want to live in? Do we want to have, do we want to be able to have, how important are these services to us and are we going to be able to fund them? And, and that's one of the hopes too with, with that information session that I'm hoping is that, you know, you come to that and you get all your information down. So that way on the town floor meeting, we're having the discussion about exactly what you mentioned, Tom, rather than arguing and, and discussing the, the validity of the numbers. We've all come in, we've all set a baseline with the numbers, and then we're arguing over the merits of paying for this or that. My my biggest when I when I go through the when I go through the budget my, my biggest thing is that stands out to me is thirteen thousand dollars increase in our in the selectman's line item for for um, mm -hmm. IT services okay <coughs> um, now oh, please <laughs> <laughs> well don't go there do you, I can and, I can, and, I, can I can talk to that one be, because because that, because that because that, that I, I mean because that stands out. Okay. Right. So then, then you have to go and you have to ask, well, why do you need it? And and I and I can say that you know up until today, I couldn't get emails on my. You got it fixed. On my phone, <laughs> because we we weren't doing the right thing with our email server that allowed me to get <laughs> allowed me to get emails on my phone that I can get every account in the world on but i couldn't get the town we've account. been doing a lot of things very minimally to keep costs down yes. but we almost had to pay in a very big way um, so you know. I, I and i thought that was kind of a funny thing but it's not you know and because because all of a sudden we had we had someone that 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 had done a kind of a unofficial study and and we um it was pointed out to us many areas of concern let's put it that way well, the, 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 and, how, the, and you got to you got to do something about those. Well, it's important to bear in mind, Tom. The the, the, the requested review from uh, IT a IT company was in line with the DLS report that we commissioned I five or six say, years exactly. ago. Exactly. Right. We we've, we've taken we've taken one step in the DLS report that was commissioned, and that review uh, two steps. One was telephones, but on the IT and the firewall. <coughs> and on the IT side, we made one step. And then here we are only a couple of years later, and it's like, okay, so the rest of the 10-year plan, are you going to implement it? Time to implement it. And we're hardwired um, now, too. Right, right. So. Yes. I would say that uh, as far as IT goes, if you talk to any business company head, and they will tell you, if, if you see any business that is making any kind of profit or doing, doing well, if they are not investing in their IT and their security, they're essentially... They're putting up a white flag to attract people from the entire world. We're in a position where we're not, where it doesn't matter if we're a small town in Massachusetts, where someone who is a criminal in Australia can go on at, you know, Anytime. it's it's two thirty in the morning for us, and it's like the afternoon. It's you know he's on his third cup of coffee, and he finds this little white flag flying, and he can just. It's an income source. Ex I mean, that's exactly it's, right, and it's 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 this you know, how it is. It's, and it's it's frustrating that we have to do that as a small town. But that's that's the nature of. Uh, <coughs> Unfortunately, dark. small towns we don't have the money to have an IT department. Yeah. So, you know, we have to private source it. Yeah. And that's you know that's. And I mean. And security, is, I can't stress enough how important security is mm -hmm. and backups. Furcog is looking at something now. There's a us and two other towns that are interested. So I saw that. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's something we've been kind of pushing. And I I've mentioned it to, to uh, Linda Dunlevy yeah. at the Furcog too. Like we really need to. That's an area where we can mm -hmm. really uh, join together and sure. and you know but make some savings there, and especially with the schools somewhere. too. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. Were you going to say something, Bruce? I think I Something about I, okay. Right. So with, with respect to the other things that jump out, Tom, unless you want to continue on with the IT piece. Right. 
So and and and, and so so again so I, so then I keep, I continue looking through the, I I look through the budget, and and then the uh, there's fifty one thousand uh, dollars that or fifty thousand dollars for the telecom bingo thing. That's the one I had but, but, there's, but there's a but there's an offset for that fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah. So under general government said that we increase and, and that's why I hate, numbers are good but they can also be just misleading. Right. Yep. And they say well general government's up six point three percent. But if you take that fifty thousand out, and and, <laughs> and 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 take that fifty thousand, subtract the thirty nine thousand, said we're actually at a minus percentage right. for growth. So, it, it's I don't a, think there's fat in the budget. No one said, but there has to be a reason why we're getting that free cash difference. Sure. And and it's either that, you know, and the only way to do that is your final year end accounting, is you see which accounts is overspent, yeah. yeah. which yeah. account. I'm sorry, and that's the only way you're going to figure it out. Right. Once you figure that out, then. Well, or or carry forwards, or state reimbursements, yeah, or whatever, VA whatever, reimbursements, whatever, whatever, or one or time. Yeah, right. But yeah, that is that is two distinct issues. Yes. Right? And you can't, you know. Right. And I think you need to tackle that Each issue. One of them. Yep. And you need to but the only tackle way you can and do decide: that is, is there fat in the budget? Project, what your yep. budget is, correct? And what your actual <coughs> expenditures? Well, Scott, what was last yeah. year? What was last year? What what, what was last year? What two hundred seventy thousand dollars of carry forward from uh, prior years, two years. Three years accounting of the capital stabilization fund. That was, that big, was, that was the big. That was that was the big yes. nut. Yeah. But yeah. So that's two hundred seventy thousand dollars. That's so. a one time thing. But right. that rem right. that got us from seven eighty down to this five hundred this year. Yes, yeah. yes, that's so correct. That, so that's now now running. the question is: now, Is five hundred the new norm? And how do what how, what what compromise what com right. what is that composed of? Yes, right. yes, Peter. Yeah. Um, I just want to point out that while I agree that you ought to know, absolutely, you absolutely ought to know. It, knowing doesn't give you any more money. <laughs> no, that's, that's right. right. That's right. 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 That knowing, is very true. <laughs> knowing doesn't solve a problem. Right. And, and basically, you have a situation where you have, in, you know, through the budgeting process, you close out the books in the year, and you have certain, you know, laws that say you can't overspend these accounts, okay? And you're basically the uh, revenue folks in Boston will tell you to estimate your, your revenues on the conservative side because they don't want you coming up short on those, right. but if we tightened it all up and forecast way more accurately and everybody, you know, got, they didn't have excess left over in their budget and so free cash only bump, bumped up, let's say, 100,000, you know, 150 or something like that, then we got a problem because the way we finance our capital stuff, mm -hmm. okay, is to take a share of the extra free cash that's generated each year. Right. Because you could look at it, you know, a different way you could look at it would be that cable, that capital stabilization override should have been for three hundred grand. We know that. Not for hundred. <laughs> exactly right. Okay. Right. okay. Should have changed because that. Because hundred, you know, whatever, a uh, hundred grand that doesn't cap, cover, cover capital needs for the town. And you could see the way you're now you're tossing stuff in, so that if you go and say, aha, here's the stuff that we are. Overestimate or underestimating revenues. That would be the standard one. We're underestimating revenues, and by estimating tighter, we can uh, get a higher revenue number into our budget, and therefore that will solve the budget problem. It will also kill us on the capital side, right, right. because the money won't be built there. Because again, yeah. you're not generating any new money. Okay, you're just trying to be smarter about how you use it. But you know, I'd say we're being pretty smart already by the way that you are. Sort of placing your, when you get the free cash number, you're right off the bat saying this certain percentage or this amount goes into our capital needs. Okay, and we're not just spending it on stuff that's going to be, you know, take care of the current year but not think about the future. So it's, yeah, it's something you want to know, but it doesn't solve a problem of coming up with more money. You know, the only thing you look there is, as you go through mm -hmm. the, you know, myriad of town revenue. You know, and it's several pages of all the items, all the different ways we get in money. And as you're going through that, you ought to be looking at each one of those and saying, okay, it's been 10 years since we changed the fees on this one. Or, you know, is there a way we can maximize, you know, get more revenue from, from this account or from that account? And that's the kind of thing that should be done, you know, on a regular basis. Because otherwise, you know, you turn around and you find out, geez, you know, I haven't looked at this for a long time and we're only charging this much and, you know, that's nuts. 
that should be part of the process. Good point. We're going to look for new revenue sources. That, that, that's or always the revenue sources. Yeah, because there's some cases where yeah, it absolutely is justified. Right. I mean, it's like a business. Oh, yeah. You, oh, don't yeah. Sit, you just sit there and you look for new revenue sources. And we're trying to be smart about all this uh, stuff. Businesses don't sit there and say, hmm, how much money can I give back to my customers? You know, you're never going to hear that from Really? Them. Yeah. <laughs> well, and another I input don't. to this, <laughs> another input to this, too, and we touched on it a little last time, or the time before last, is how much money we've been saving through other things. And I think that's a very important piece that often gets lost in the noise because people only focus on, oh, you want to raise that? Well, it would be much more if we didn't do all of these savings that we've been doing, like the phone system, mm -hmm. the energy stuff, and things like that. That's a very important thing. And, and bear in mind, all of this, what exciting new things are we doing? New programs, like we're at, what, what new programs are we adding in the school? What new, uh, I mean, look at our presentation technology in here. We're not adding any of this new. This is just to keep our heads above water and to keep the buildings from crumbling around us, let alone do anything new or innovative. That's not even an option. Well, I would say South County EMS is new and innovative. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. And, and, that's, and, 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 <coughs> and, and I, I would that, say, yeah. and I would say that if you're in the real, if you're in the real world, that you wouldn't add a program without without the revenue. Mm -hmm. And in South County EMS, if, if you look at if you look at South County EMS, if we weren't using off, if we weren't offsetting this year with with retained earnings, it would be up what, about a hundred thousand about a hundred thousand dollars or yeah. 100, actually hundred ninety one ninety eight one hundred ninety eight thousand. Thank you. So so so. I sorry, I forgot about South County. So 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 sorry. if you look at that hundred ninety eight thousand, that that's money that we have never applied. You know, we we've been able to absorb that over the last few years because of, of uh, state grants, federal grants, uh, right. um, and and monies that we were able to save. So at some point, that has to come. That has to come due. Right. So so that is that's a two hundred thousand addition to our our budget right there. Right. Actually, so, to, if I could mm -hmm. play on that along those lines, one of the nice pieces about this budget sheet being effectively ten years total, the whole the whole the, the big sheet is <coughs> ten full years. So the, I want to pile on the praising for the initiative that created South County EMS. When it was originally designed, it was to take and give the three towns, the participating towns, 24 hours, seven day a week, paramedic level care right. with a response time of under eight minutes. That's the design, right? <coughs> 2014, we were paying 155. The town was raising 155, 367 for our EMT level call care that was essentially more times than not having intercepts right. where paramedic care was given and patients were transferred. And it's not to say it wasn't, wasn't an, a bad model. There's a considerably better model right now and it's costing in 2019 $198,893. That's, for the sake of it, you know, forty thousand dollars difference for twenty-four hour, seven-day, paramedic level care. If it's a markedly different, you service. want to call that a new initiative? On I, I think especially I that's that's <laughs> having a level like this is also going that transfers to the future Correct. desirability of our town. If we're pulling in, Precisely. if we're building a new. Right. Construction that's going to be senior housing that's going to have forty or fifty people living in third thirty forty ish that's close. Yeah. Uh, that's going to I mean that's going to be a significant oh, yeah. security right. source for them. In, in in defense of some of those increases, we can talk about the IT piece, and I think I think I understand where Tom was going with this uh, discussion. We can talk about the IT piece. We can talk about the EMS piece. We can talk about the commitment to education piece. We can talk about the insurance piece. The insurance piece was going up anyway. Right. That was no matter what. <laughs> that, that increase was happening. We just chose to <coughs> change. It. Right. And so change our carriers for the get, same amount of money. We're exactly. expanding the benefit. Right. And we never would have avoided that one. I, I, exactly right. No. I, I also I also right. think and 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 I have the talking I, points. We got to have the talking points. Mm -hmm. Well. What was it? Eight, seven, eight, nine years ago when we that the the big override that failed. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, we all started to pay trash. Yeah, Most of us had to yes. pay for trash. Yeah. I don't know if anybody looked at their trash 
but what you pay today versus back when we first so started, it was like around eighty dollars for yeah. three months or whatever. Now it's over a hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, our our budget from '09 to now to, to FY19 budget is, is changed by like the total operating budget, like eighteen percent or whatever. My trash bill has gone up more than eighteen percent oh, yeah. over that amount of time. Yep. But I, you know, I, I, I and, and again, that's something that we're not holding that trash company to the same. To, and and yeah. and if you look at the highway department, you look at the highway department. The highway department runs trucks, and and. Then they, you know, they make do with three guys. We haven't changed. We haven't changed that. I, you know, I can argue. I, I can argue both ways. I say, you know, it just costs more money to do business right now. Um, I and and I, I don't, I don't like, I don't like that fact. But I, I keep, I keep going over this budget. I do not see anything in the budget where I would cut out. I, I really don't. And well, and so if if you can't, if you're not cutting something out, how are you going to pay for it? Right. And to a point that you made earlier about pipe, that's something that I've been a little concerned with too, is I've already seen inflation creeping up. And then if we start ending up in an actual trade war, you know, we're going to see some serious ripple effects. Inflation's going to skyrocket based on that kind of stuff. So and th and those are unknowns that we can't you know, necessarily plan for, but you got to keep that in mind. Yeah. And ultimately that ties to me why I, I think that it's, I think the best course of action is just to call for 200 and to call for it because I think we're in a position now where we are in economically, I think the town is, people are doing better and it's, it's time to look at it and say, look, we have all of these things that we've been working really hard to keep these numbers from going up X amount, but I appreciate what you're saying, Elliot. I think mm -hmm. to, to the, the discussion that a town meeting or the pre-town meeting on the Friday, that it would behoove us to have, um, you know, one one simple eight and a half by eleven that says these are the drivers of the budget. Here's the six items. Yep. These six items and a, a two-line explanation. Really simple. It's like bullet points, essentially. You know, these are the drivers of this year, and here it is. And and uh, it was it was Peter who said, you know. Uh, that you know sections of the budget shouldn't be carved out, you know, as being the individual drivers. So I've, it's it's made me think about how, uh, which uh, terms I choose when I talk about those expense growth. It's easy to get deep in the weeds on some of these things, whether it's EMS or whether it's IT or whether it's education growth. It's easy to do that. It's hard when you start talking to the community about. Two hundred thousand dollars, which is going to raise you know fifty one cents on your tax rate, oh, yeah. or it's going to cost you another one hundred and fourteen dollars and thirty one cents, as opposed to, based on the average value of, of a property. We're asking you know, in that question, we're asking for not just money. We're asking for trust and the fact that our efforts are worth that value. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. We work pretty hard at this. If you don't trust us that it's right, vote no. If you really trust that it's right, please vote yes. But we don't ask very often. It's a cup of coffee a week. No. Two dollars a week, more or less. Great point. Well, and, and also, you know, <laughs> I think one of the things to me too is, is that I think it would be irresponsible to not look at all of these options sure. and to just charge ahead and say, <laughs> all right, well, we'll take it out of free cash. And right. that's why we're discussing right. it. Right. Great because point. it's easy to just brush your hand and say, ah, you know what, we can, we can deal right. with it in this year and, and then move on. And you know you can argue back and forth about the amount or whatever, but I think it's irresponsible to not do that. And it, and, and it would be not in line with our conservative approach to everything. Right. Good point, David. <clears throat> Even though some people might think that that's counter to being conservative, I sure. I quite disagree with that actually. So but. so and, and and I will counter that. Is that the override fails? Are you going to cut two hundred thousand dollars out of the budget? We won't be able to cut two hundred thousand dollars of the budget, but we can certainly cut some to do some. Yeah, we don't really have any choice if it fails. I mean, that's that's the I mechanics. Think, of I think it. The, the the trap the trap, uh, Tom, is that, and anybody who's listening, that if we simply apply reserves and do it on all on the revenue side, we only exacerbate the challenges in future years. Yep. That cycle doesn't break. We just kick the can down the road again. Well, it just makes it, you know, it goes from 200 to 500 to 200 to 300. You know, the gap just, the gap hasn't changed in a decade or so. 
I don't think that the song is indifferent. Down the road is the better. I think it's better to say if if I think it's more like putting an M80 in the can and then kicking well, it down. Because yeah. <laughs> then <laughs> no, yeah. that's when things <clears throat> when you when it gets spent down, it always seems to be suddenly it's like it's just. I I I've lived through the the, the failed override. I see what it did to our schools. Yep. All right. And, and, the and, and, and I, I saw the death, death. I, I saw, I mean, we still haven't, I mean, all of our departments still have, I mean, we just got back to 40 hours in the highway department where our town hall is still only open until noontime on Thursday. Right. Um, I mean, we still haven't recovered from that, that last. Um, and, 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 and personally, it still bothers me that we cut trash off because I look at Every time I get that, every three months I get the bill from the trash thing. I'm saying, you know, people can say what they want, but gosh, we we did we were pretty the the the, the plan that we had with the whole town was in it together. We got probably the best deal that we're ever going to get. Oh, the best I, deal. I best bet if you look at, I bet if you add up everybody's plan today. Oh yeah. yeah. It, <clears throat> somebody's making money off, and it's not the town of Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um I think you know the, the trash people are probably. And, and I and I know what the how how we had to negotiate with BFI, yeah. and it, they were they were and, and allied basically BFI, uh, allied in <laughs> whatever their name was, and and they they would have the guy come in and Margaret would sit across on the table, and and they would argue with one another, and they go back and forth, and Margaret said, well, we only can afford to pay this, and the guy said, we can't do it for that, and Margaret said, well, we only can afford to pay, and and the guy, all right, well, we'll go another year, right. and, but. But I, I don't have, I can't do that as a single sure. trash, right. trash person. Right. You know, I, I can take it to another company, but I don't have the same. Right. So you have no bargaining the power. The, part, the town had a bargaining power, and it was good. Now we don't have that power. So I and all of us pay more because we don't do that any longer. To say nothing of it like yard waste. Can't bring that down anymore either. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, I don't think we can argue the merits of it. You know, our revenue stream, the budget, and everything else. But a couple meetings ago, Scott, you mentioned over half the people in this town are over 65. In there, yep. And, and they're on fixed income. Sure they are. And <coughs> their costs go up, but their income doesn't go up. They're in the same problem the town is. Yep. And if, if you look back at the overrides that didn't pass, it's basically apathy in the town. Yeah, some of it. And, and and that's what it boils down to. Sure. And, you know, after the override last year, I looked at the voters, mm -hmm. you know, who voted, who didn't vote. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised who didn't vote. And, and it lost by what, 20 votes or something? 14. 14. 14 votes. Yep. You'd be surprised at who didn't vote. Simply didn't show up. Yep. You could say that about a lot of elections. In the it, past. Absolutely. It's, absolutely. It's, absolutely. It's a, it's a, Echo of a Absolutely. pattern that rings through. But when the override did that. pass, they got people out to vote. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom. Line. Yeah. No, I agree. You get That's the bottom line for every election. Absolutely. We sit in here and we have the most <laughs> deplorable <laughs> message. We have but the you, most you know deplorable what? turnout in the world, practically. You, you know. In general, I, it's and, awful. And 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 I and I'm gonna tell you. The hardest thing to me is that we 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 pit. Unfortunately, we pit one one part of our population against mm -hmm. against the other. I hate that because 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 I when I look, you know, my my mom and dad they they lived in town. They paid taxes. Bruce, your dad was a superintendent of school, and 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 you know he came from the from the town meeting every year to try to and and he did the best he could. And and I still believe our our superintendent still does this. They haven't changed. The only difference between the superintendent 40 years ago and today is that the names have changed. But they, and, and unfortunately, when um, you, you, you summed it up, we, we, have, we pit par parts of our community against an, another part. And I would just, just I, I, I wouldn't, I'd love to have the conversation about what we do well. You know, and, and sure, are there things that we can do better? God, every, every single one of us can do something better, okay? But I'd love to say what, what we do well. Um, I know when our kids go to Frontier, um, 
our kids from Sunderland do very well when they go to Frontier. I know, I know, I went to Frontier when I I graduated from Frontier. 42nd out of 104, so I was no brain scholar. I still don't think I'm a, but, but, F, but I went, I went, I went to a state college, and all of a sudden I was, I, I did very, very well at that school because of the education I got from Frontier. That hasn't changed. Our kids, Dwayne Davis is a, a, a brain surgeon in North Carolina, okay, and he graduated from Frontier Regional, and and uh, you, you look at all the kids that have done exceptionally well after they, after they. Lived, they they left Frontier, and and we complain because we want better. We always want better. So I, I think we I think our kids do well. I I, I think we prof provide a good education. I I wish I just wish we could get all our people in town to look at the the instead of just arguing about what we don't have about the good things that we do have. And I, and I think we offer good things. You know I, I remember last year we we had the discussion about. Um, the 300th, you know, the 300th celebration about mm -hmm. all the money that that we're going to spend on on a celebration. I know how many people are on the committee. I go to the committee meetings, and and I can tell you those those people every waking minute that they have, they're they're concerned about how much money they're spending. They want to put on a good. They want to put on something that every one of us can be proud about. But every single one of them is concerned about how much everything costs. I hear that in every department that we have in town, no one, no one says, you know, screw the taxpayer. We're just going to spend because we have it. But we're we're all try to do the best that we can. And I, I just wish that I, if my I would think we could just have a discussion about the good things that we do because we do a lot of good things. We do a lot of good things, and 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 I I hate and, and you're right. I hate pitting one 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 group against the other. I I hate that. I, I, but I don't. It always comes down to that, and I and I, I wish we could. I just wish people could look at what the good things that we do have. Agreed. So, do you answer your question, Tom? Could we cut two hundred thousand dollars out of the budget? Wouldn't be fun. <coughs> Wouldn't be the best thing to advance the continued progress, the continued work that supports the taxpayer, every resident in town. But it could be done. I'm still of the mindset, to be honest with everybody, and say that this this gap, this structural difference, we squeezed mm -hmm. the to the extent that we could, and we have to address it on the revenue side, or else it comes back. And agree. that's just the facts. And yeah. if you know, someone someone wants to, you know, jump on this side of the table for a few years and drill down deep in the weeds and do this, I'm game. Well, making the numbers line up is actually. I mean, you could. Sit there and create a nice little program that would do that yeah, very do that. easily. That's that. not. <laughs> they, it, was, it was Francis who said, you know, the, bu the budget. The budget is the statement of the community. Right, and I think that's that's it. Like and that gets line. back to a point that you made earlier. What kind of community do we want to live in? That's really what it what, what it talks about. So to to Cherry's discussion earlier, <clears throat> uh, of council's recommendation of councils. About two budgets. Is there? Is there? And I'm, I'm, I apologize, Mr. Chair, for subject jumping, but no, it's okay. I, I'm of the mindset to simply put it on a contingent and be done with it. Keep I, it as it's structured. I would agree with that, personally, <laughs> for a, ma a number of reasons. <laughs> Again, contingent, just contingent. Yep. And we have to go back and, and second time. You won't be able to retire yet. You have to have a second meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. That's really why we're doing it. it yeah, that's right. You won't be a moderator then. <coughs> you moderate it. If it's, if it's, it's over. That's a continue. That's right after the election. Oh, good that's point. True. Moderator. That's a good point. He's gone. We could appoint him for one. Just like the selectmen. <laughs> one of you guys could be gone. Thank <laughs> God. Competition. Thank God. <laughs> um. So again, with respect. That's <laughs> contingent. <laughs> He's moving to Northfield anyway to be the new town administrator. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Any more discussion with respect to w w warrant or motions? I don't mean to drive in the meeting, but I want to be no. home by 8.30. Yeah, I, but it was... <laughs> was are you going to go over these or no? I, I think we should, if you guys are fine with the budget and that, we can take a look That's at it. this capital requests yeah, that are out there in front of us. Items yeah, I'd like yeah, to... yeah, please. We've, we've covered this enough. Yeah. Tonight. Tom, any areas? I've spoken up. I, I, again, I, 
I budget up, budget the. I, I I love our town. I just, but when we get around the budget time, it's just it's yeah. it's a hard discussion to have. And and I you know I know everybody to, they just want to do what's best for. Agreed. It's a good sentiment. Yeah. But. yeah. And the, the only thing I'll say is if anybody has any questions, email us. Come to the uh, meeting Come next Friday meeting because. Next Friday. Uh, <coughs> library at what time? Uh, seven. It actually, starts at four to seven. Right. Yeah. yeah. Four to seven. Um, I think the more that you can be educated in what's going on here, uh, the better. And that's better for everybody involved. I mean, we spend a lot of time buried in this, sure. so, so we know. But I, I balls at the waterline. Right, because, you know, otherwise, you, you know, you just get these, like, talking points. Like, just you just see a number off in space, and it's not connected to anything. So if I could, with the capital list that's in front of us, Bruce, the only action that the Capital Planning Committee has taken to recommend was the wastewater treatment. That was important because they have their own funding sources, they have their own capital plan. They, they do a good job with that, those assets. Uh, voted to uh, forward to the board uh, and town meeting the fire truck because second year in, and the rest of it we have not gotten after. So if you look from total fire from the highway department to ATM, that's what we're talking about tomorrow. So we see voted 327, 18. Those are actions taken by the Capital Planning Committee. Everything else is an open discussion tomorrow. The two year lease payment or lease payment for the truck is just that, that's comes out of capital payment. stabilization. That's a, a debt payment on the truck. We have a mower purchase, which is an area of discussion. Um, the fuel dispensing for the highway department is the diesel fuel side. <coughs> Last year we did gasoline yes. and we did the electronics. Two post vehicle lift, there's open questions about why there's a lift required, why there's a lift even question, why we're even yeah. on a lift down at the highway garage. That's Not sure of that. Where, where there's a, a lot of reservation. Uh, I, I did speak with the highway superintendent about the F-250. Uh, it is uh, 10 plus years old. It can be repaired and used for another year, but he will be coming back. You, you know, we know, we know it's a vehicle and we kind of get it. Uh, but I can say with a straight face, there's active discussion, capital planning committee about why do we have a $12,000 more when we contract most everything out and why on earth are we putting a lift down at the garage? I have the same concerns. Yep. I mean, you were either highway garage or, or repair shop, in repair right. and, or repair shop. And I don't think we should Bingo. look into getting into the repair business. Okay. And I think the mowing is very cost effective that we're doing now, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't get into the mowing business either. We got out of it for a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those are those are active. Uh, Library, this is interesting because our, if I, if I could just go yeah, down go the, list, the list, or, yeah. no, I'm going to just keep spitting marbles out. No. <laughs> so as we look at the, the definition for capital or major maintenance, the question about a $10,000 threshold or the extending of the life of an asset is something that we defined early on. And these two requests right here for roof cleaning and masonry don't, it, don't get to the... Um, the building envelope as a individual individual repair, but the three items: the compressor, <coughs> which is part of the building, HVAC repairs and replace, mason repairs, and roof cleaning. They're all called out, and you know it can be argued that these could be submitted as building envelope or building maintenance. I like the fact they're called out. We have we we have active discussion about the definition about capital and major maintenance. That's that's got to be refined. Uh, nobody's against these things, you know, taking repointing masonry before the bricks start popping out or the right. caps come it's off. It's, it's, kind, it's kind of a good idea. It's not how you classify it. And this is the fourth year of this program with uh, HVAC repairs and replace. Those are air handlers in the ceiling. There's 13 of them. They crap out. They cost about $5,000. We keep putting money in there, and they have been uh, upkept pretty well by uh, Mr. T.J. Conroy, who services that. That's a total library asking for 14000 specific to the building. Yeah. So the, 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 the cops are next. Da, 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 da. 
Anyway, the big nut, of course, is a cruiser. And the question is, we are now with, we are one cruiser away from a three-year cycle. Can we postpone this cruiser and make sure that we're on a three-year cycle that we can commit to for replacement? We stretched it out with the prior chief to four and five years when money was tight. We've done two cruisers in the last four years. So the question is, if we get to next year and then are we on that three-year loop? Uh, there's no, no question about the amount of miles and the, and the vintage. But the question the capital planning committee ha is, is actively um, is actively investigating is can we really have a three year cycle that makes sense, and if so, this would fall off. Uh, security we we you know security discussion uh, the chief put together a very good uh, presentation for this body and, and the yeah. finance committee at the time about the key card access, the security system, and cameras all in one piece. That makes perfect sense. Yep. There's active discussion about firearms replacement. Do we do it wholesale? Do we do it piecework? I know you weighed in on this before. The only issue I have with that, you know, they, they say they used up and whatever, yeah. is, is I'm dead set against trading those guns in. Yep. Those guns should be destroyed. Yep. Because eventually they're going to end up in who knows somewhere. Whose hands. They'll end up in the marketplace. And and yeah. you know, with all the issues going on with firearms and everything else, uh, you know, at least ten years down the road, that gun isn't going to be used in the wrong place. Great point. And and for two hundred bucks extra, yep, per gun, yep, just destroy, destroy it. it. Don't trade them in. That's my opinion. And the, and the and the, with the, the cost of steel now. Why not recycle it? <laughs> could, come, could, could come back as an entire car. Believe it or not, most of it's plastic. I know. Anyway, tongue in cheek. Uh, that would make that cost go up a little bit more. Yeah. And there is question, and, and I have to say this this taser question, uh, when the chief was presenting, the mm. question is if it's a three year life cycle for batteries and replacement parts, why isn't that just a contract in the operating budget versus a capital item? Right, because it's right. maintenance of the equipment essentially. If you so contract this, radios out, is he changing over to a new system or something? Yeah, this is a, this is a new this, taser. This is a new system. I understand, but and it would be more of a recurrent cost right. than a one-time thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. So if that's if that's the case and it moves to the it operating be, budget in the future the years, budget. that's fine. Right. And that's that's it for uh, police. Again, the question uh, capital planning is talking at, at length about is about the cycle. I expect that to be the longest piece of discussion of the cruisers. Uh, North Main Street Engineering is an active discussion. As you know, uh, their presentation here, the room was full. This is about uh, these resubmitted changes. Sherry and, and I think David had to spoke with the agency, uh, CHA, CHA, about what are, this, what are the drivers for this cost. And there is a question right now about having a peer review look at the current engineering and uh, not spending this money this year. The risk is, do we fall off a year on the tip? We don't want to do that. And we don't want to fall off a exactly. year on the tip. So well, that's, again, that's a question. You want to talk to I, telephone at library and public safety? Yeah, uh, $20,000 of the 24586 is for um, IT improvements that will look at offsite um, backup and some of the um, improvements that were recommended under the um, assessment that Paragus did for the town. Uh, the budget that they gave us was between twenty and thirty thousand. We took the, the lower number uh, to start with, and the four thousand five eighty six would bring the public safety complex and the library onto the new phone system, oh, which will internet. result in um, savings in the monthly bills for the phone service. Um, much um how much should we save do you know is there any idea? i don't know yet because yeah. we've we're not on for a full year yet but that it makes sense well and it should and be substantial that, that was the four thousand right and, and also it's not just a matter of obviously the savings was great but it's also that you're getting everybody on the same phone All system on the same yeah. system which right. is very important the it's it for grant paid for this building only exactly so. and also you step back too we're saving a lot of money still over the old phone system right um, of course, this is all using VoIP and, you know, internet services, not a communications device or anything like that, but, you know, 
point. Who, far be it for me to argue with Ajit yes. Pai, our great FCC chairman, on that point. But <coughs> even though most businesses have moved over to VoIP. VoIP. But aside from that. Uh, but that's one of those other points, too, where we're also actively working to save, save money, money right. in the operating budget. <coughs> Then we've got the renovated and reseed the fields. There was a request from REC that's, that's here, out right? here. And Merit, too. I'm sorry, and Merit as well. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. And we had only one question. So the park grant match is, is, is done. That's CPA. Uh, with respect to the elementary school, the three items, sorry, two items brought forward by the elementary school, the hot water heater and the upgrade of security cameras. The committee left and with Peter's help got some feedback from the um, administration about a, a slightly different issue and uh, there was really no questioning about this and I want to I want to thank Peter for um, shotgunning the administration to get down to with the facilities director the superintendent and a bunch of background information to talk about these two items in particular security cameras and the hot water tank invariably the hot water heating system will end up being a capital asset that's installed at the elementary school mm -hmm. but it will also be an operational savings it just has to be because the size of the system right now is grossly mismatched. inefficient it just yeah. mismatched for its use yeah. you get a big boiler that makes hot water for you could do almost on demand with constant recirculation it's it's anyway so we're going to skip repairs and uh, go for a straight replacement and then the security cameras the Ben Barshevsky, the principal, was very clear about the need for a system that is reliable, robust, and you can actually see faces. That's kind of important. Yeah. So, hey, can I ask? Uh, so we had a couple of school yeah. school committee members, um, resident in town, to talk to me about a concern about some uh, flashing siding that's missing on oh, the side yeah. of the school, and it, and they actually had went down to talk to the. Um, people down there and he didn't come around he, he I guess when bottom line is he didn't feel that he was being listened to or whoever he talked to wasn't sure that the work would be done to get it fixed as soon as possible can I ask you guys get a chance can you just talk to Ben and ask him about about that and and again I you know and it just may be the the way the conversation went but I just want to was it related to flashing, he said? It's uh, some of the siding on the, the siding on the north east or northwest side of the, the and, building. And uh, should we get an answer back to you or you could pass on? You, you can just you just let Sherry know and Sherry will tell us and, and I'll I'll uh, relay okay. it back. I mean, we want to make sure we respond yeah. yeah. and, and and I think I think it's gonna be fixed and they know about it, but there was a question if it was heard. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. The water heater and the security cameras for the elementary school, the tractors for Frontier. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And this is our based in uh, the union based on the um, based on the, the agreement we're paying that percentage. Yeah, I, I, I understand okay. that. Yeah. 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 It's wasn't yeah. sure yeah. which was which And there's some question about type and style and uh, frankly uh, Deerfield's all over that. Yeah. Let let them have it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, tractors they will figure tractor. it. Tractors are tractors are tractor. Exactly. And the hot water heater is not unlike the issue we had last year, the year before, with the air handler at the public safety complex. Correct. The same thing. You know, mismatch and yeah. it's a mismatch. Yeah. yeah, that was a. It's that a cost big, money. The bigger is not always better. Right. So those. Especially when it comes to HVAC. That's and if you go to the second page here, you know these are again waste treatment. Easy. You know our our our. I have to take the opportunity to thank the folks who manage Rich and Company, Rich Brennan and Company, who manage the wastewater treatment system. They've had an active capital plan for well over a decade. Cameras and pipes, pumps, vibration analysis, and any kind of improvement, they do a great job. Uh, and this is pretty modest. This INI infiltration uh, space is actually a DEP, DEP mandate. This is the first phase of a three-phase part that is engineering and identifying all the infiltr infiltration points and then having an action plan that we can be held accountable to by the DEP. So that's what that's about. The other two are pretty simple. 
So our total requests, again, as it came at face value, was over $300,000. And you can see that it's one of the few times we've effectively got a little over $300,000 for capital. Now, again, it's not been completely vetted, but it is nice to see some alignment between the types of requests that are here and the available revenues uh, to actually pay for them. Way too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way too much. You guys got anything else you want to talk about? I got some other issue, but it has nothing to, do nothing, with to do with <laughs> okay. nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with this. Topic for the uh, public comment section? Yeah. Okay. All right. How about you, Tom? Um, I, I just <coughs> want to say that uh, um, I, I, I went to a, a, a wake this evening before the meeting for a gentleman that was 95 years old and uh, his son has lived in town for a long, long time, Bruce Weston. Mm. And he, gentleman was 95 years old, served in the Second World War, uh, hit the beaches in, on Utah Beach uh, during the during the invasion, uh, served, the, you know, when they go, went back then, they went for the entire war. They didn't go for seven weeks or seven months or a year or whatever. They just stayed there the entire time. And I, I was just, I, the... I was just thinking about Bruce's dad and what, and he actually ended up in the Battle of Bulge and he liberated a uh, concentration camp and the things that that man saw in his life. And, and I know Bruce was saying that he never heard, his dad never talked about that his entire four years of service uh, until the last 10 years or so. Um, I would, I just think that we're, we're losing, we're losing a generation um, that, <coughs> That gave so much to what we have, and I just, I, I, I just thought it was amazing, uh, you know, that they did that, um, and the, the amount of history that they saw and, and participated in. So. All right, that's a, that's a good point. Um, do we have any, uh, any? Uh, Town Administrator board updates tonight? Uh, no, just working um, on the budget and with the various departments and committees who will be at the um, open house <coughs> on Friday, <coughs> April 20th. When is it? From what time? Four to Friday, seven. April 20th from 4 to 7 at the Sunderland Public Library. So oh. please come out and uh, check it out. Yeah. All right. Good minutes already. And then we have some correspondence here from. Fire Chief. Actually, first, no, we have Union 38 and their intent to bargain proposed health insurance changes. That's sure, can you talk one of just a little bit about that. Yeah. And about what it means. I mean, we, we know that any kind of change in plan. Right. Well, allows, the mechanics of it. This is the mechanics, right? It allow, allows that element of the contract to be opened up. Um, Correct. So this, this is a step from the Union 38's uh, uh, Teachers Association. Act, saying to the board saying yeah. that they um, intend to bargain and uh, so they'd like to schedule a meeting and have a yeah. representative okay. um, to negotiate with. Okay. So do we know this is a, a narrow bargain? This stays within this section of the contract. We're not opening up the entire contract. Right. Right. It's okay. Like That's very limited very scope. Yeah. Right. Just the insurance piece. Yes. That's good. Why so, would we open up the entire contract? I, only wanted to answer. That's yep, all. Just a clarify. Why would we? Please. I don't know. Maybe because you could. I, I'm not sure. Because you're getting a benefit. I, I totally understand that. Yes. It's a good question to ask. I wanted yep. to ask. I, I like that. So then they'll, uh, we'll be getting back to them with a. Um, do we have a member of the board that would like to? Who negotiated the last one? The Union 38. Yeah. Uh, that'd be me. So, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. yeah, just let me know. Yep. That makes sense, you know, just for consistency. And then our next item we have is from our fire chief, Steve Benjamin, about a expiration of a agreement for the town park. It says, I'm writing on 
Writing this letter on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Sunderland Volunteer Firemen's Association and the Sunderland Fire Department. The current agreement which allows these organizations to enjoy proceeds from town park rentals in exchange for maintenance, upkeep, and improvements to the property is set to expire on 16th of April 2018. We request this agreement be renewed for another 20-year term. Please contact me for any further discussion. So it's been a little while since we... 20 years worth? Yeah. Tom, you probably did that one. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't remember, I don't remember 20 years. Uh, I, I'd, I'd make a recommendation for 10 years. I, well, that's what I was going to say. It seems like a long... 20, I don't remember 20 years. I mean, it could have been. I'll second for, for 10. 10. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> And again, they do a wonderful job managing that space, <coughs> events do. in that space, and maintenance and upkeep in that space. They do a great job. So. Yep. I see we're coming down to the public comment section. I heard somebody had a public <laughs> comment that they like to make. <laughs> what do you got? The yeah, it's storehouse. It's on, it's on, on North Main Street. It's on, yeah, it's on the assessor's yeah. list. Yeah. Well, it should be up to the tax collector because sorry, it hasn't been in and I mean, you know, turn it over to a lawyer and let him start the yep. foreclosure and let's be done with it. Right. Get rid of it. There was a time we raised the point with a treasure collector and there is a sorry, treasure collector. And she said there is a time this spring there's bundling a handful of them. Yep, so and that would mm. be one. Okay. It, it, it's out, it it's once. absolutely actionable. <laughs> just out of curiosity is the is the uh, gas station on 116 is that ever does that ever fall into an eyesore if that's the gas station for so long Sandy's. which one um the oh that yeah well i don't know it's because it, it is starting to fall apart there isn't is it, it paying the taxes Probably. as far as i know yeah oh then i guess so there's not much yeah taxes. Probably. Yep. If you want to open up a gas station, there's a... No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. No. Okay. Yeah. Two yeah. points. Sure. So, Keith McFarland, uh, Sunderland Elementary School Committee, Frontier Regional, also an on-call firefighters. We appreciate the nice. support for the truck. Yep. Um, one's uh, more as a, a positive, one's more of a negative, um, but they're just more informational rather than trying to convince of anything. And I feel like... It's important that I would actually communicate this. So I just attended a meeting with other representative uh, school districts in the area with uh, Representative Kulik last week nice. to appeal for full funding for regional transportation, which has never been funded. Yes. Uh, he was very supportive. Uh, we tried to look at different ways, thinking outside the box of how to get that fully funded. One of the rep uh, recommendations that he made was going forward to try to take regional transportation off appropriations and to put it onto Chapter Sun, uh, 70 or regular funding. That way it's not subject to right, the ups and downs. Um, the other thing that happened was there is a bill that's being co-sponsored by he and I don't remember the uh, representative's names, a Republican from Worcester to establish a commission to look at how regional schools are funded. And it seems to have a lot of support coming out. So that is going to look at it. Regional transportation, um, Chapter 70, the entire funding for specifically regional school districts. Um, on the other side of it, um, I was on the Insurance Advisory Commission with Frontier, and listening to um, their um, negotiations with Hampshire Trust. Mm -hmm. I'm also a teacher in Amherst, where their uh, health insurance fell apart. Okay. So they are. Um, so I'm hearing and seeing two different sides. Uh, Amherst is going with MIIA, which. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking at, yep. You have decided, or I don't know if you've decided that you're going to be looking at for Sunderland Elementary. Just Sunderland Elementary. Yes. And uh, Frontier is staying with uh, Hampshire. the Hampshire Trust, which from all I've heard is, is very good, stable, one of the better ones in the area. And what other representatives from other towns, and I'm hearing both sides, is why is Sunderland going to MIA? Do they know what they're doing? And I, and I absolutely trust this board. It's going to come back to, to, to bite us in a couple of years. That it may look good now, we're worried about down the road because those costs are now going to come, it's going to blow up, going to come back out of the town, it's going to result in high premiums for teachers or we're going to have to make cuts. Or, so I'm not trying to convince any way, I think it's more that I communicated what I was hearing uh, to this board for consideration. Okay. Uh, those are really good, really good points and areas of concern during our, our discussion. 
with with Maya M I A M I I A um, about that. Um, you know, this isn't just a sweetheart deal. They get us in the door, is it? And uh, the real the reality is on the surface that the drivers for even exploring the change was the structural changes to the participants in the Hampshire Trust. The copay drivers, the prescription drug drivers, all of that, the, the, effectively the plan change, because they administer the plan in an entirety. We don't have a menu to choose from. It's just not the way they're structured. So there was the, that change to the plan and the premium increase in the same year. And it seemed a little untenable for people who work uh, for the town and have that kind of a, a burden. You're going to get a burden on the participants and the premium. And that's when Sherry, to her credit, went said, we should look at something else. Now, we did hold uh, uh, MIAA to a handful of meetings and uh, the commitment that, of course, our rollout uh, with our our participation and our our, our code, our sick code, our, our total our total numbers, um, historically looked like we would be well within their average of any increase in the future. Now they they have they man they have a managed cap right. of any given year of eleven percent, usually on the outliers of the of their risk, and that our decade worth of review looked like we would be below or at their average, which is about 4% over the last 10 years. So we're absolutely as, as fearful of the change going poorly as the participants are, but we're trying to make the best of um, the best of an opportunity. And it looked on the surface like staying with the Hampshire Trust was going to be um, potentially painful for participants. And, you know, we, we argue about 2%. I'm just going to just slightly tangential. We, we struggle with out-of-pocket compensation in the form of payroll. And then to see um, an indirect cost to uh, an employee, members who participate of, which is over 60 families total, uh, to see those out-of-pocket costs simply go up and we have no control over that was tough to swallow. Yeah, if those costs go up, it can be an effective pay cut. Only. Absolutely right. Oh, definitely. Right. Absolutely right. And the, the, the plan that I mean, Frontier is struggling with what, the what plan to do. Taking on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and then when I try to answer sure. the questions, I, as I'm I do that, starting right? to dig into it, I figure out once I figure out one yeah. thing, five things pop up, and I can't figure it out. Yeah. It's very tough not to crack. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there is there is some there is some jumps from zero to two hundred and fifty dollars for surgical daycare, inpatient yeah. admission to a hospital, zero. To five hundred dollars in emergency. You know, emergency room visits were, were seventy-five to a hundred dollars. Copays were going from ten to one hundred dollars. And you look at that, and you feel kind of like you're getting run over. And as, as you know, the um, I'll say personally, as one of the members of the board, it just tired of that sense of helplessness. And so we could make a change, stay in the same increase and expand our percentage. I thought that was sure. an opportunity to, to sure. show not just goodwill, but stewardship uh, to uh, taxpayers and commitment to our staff. So I hope it doesn't blow up because yeah. <laughs> three years from now, I'll be here going, damn it. Well, just I, another I, I thing. Just, yeah. I, I was, uh, from what I hear, I thought it was important that I- No, it is. It's great feedback. I appreciate that. Another thing to note too, with the Maya plan in the future, we can change the plan how we want it. We, right. We're not beholden to one plan. Oh, yeah. You know, like the, right. Trust. Right. The, we trust, have the trust. The trust gives us one plan. plan. One plan. They right. say, here you go. This is it. With Maya, we can make uh, plan design changes ourselves. Right. Because the plan I would have the plan for Sunday is different from the plan that Amherst would have. Right. 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 Correct. We basically right. said, let's keep it's everything better, we have here. It yeah. See? <laughs> the plan has massive deductibles attached. Yeah. yeah. Which we saw coming from the plan change, and that's when the flag went up. And to get, I give Sherry 100% of the credit for saying, we should look at this, because it's gonna hurt. Yeah. And yeah. it's not- I listened to the health insurance discussion you know, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I think the decision you're making is the right decision. I mean, <coughs> but you're getting more than so, yeah. premium paid yep. in <coughs> getting the same coverage, which right. is basically a pay increase for the, for the, for the unionized mm -hmm. and the non-unionized workers. 
Right. Um, maybe this should just be for the unionized or the non-unionized workers, and let the unionized workers keep what they got. But I know you can't do that. They've, they've actually, they've, they've, actually uh, they've actually wanted an open negotiation. Well, so I'll, 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 I'll take that as a start. Scott, yeah, you know? exactly. and, and the thing is, my personal case, my health insurance went up twenty-three percent this year. Oh, yes. I got no choice in it because mm -hmm. that went on Medicare. Yeah, and that comes right out of your pay. You have right. no use, no. Just all right off the top. Yeah, you have no say in it or anything else. Right. Well, so they that's... should be lucky what they got. That's that's how we felt, Bruce, when when we looked at the the copays and such that oh, were yeah. coming down through, and 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 I'll, I'll the, Scott Scott and I have been with the Hampshire for a long time, and 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 we it's very difficult, very difficult for us to change p plan, but we didn't start with the Hampshire. What uh, we were with Franklin, Franklin, Franklin which went and, under, which which went under. Um, and and that's why we went. That's why we went to Hampshire. Hampshire has been very good to us. Um, but when you look at, but we're not. Do, we're not doing our fiduciary responsibility if we don't look at the plans. And and really, when you look at the plans, and and going forward, my my is is a, a large large outfit. Um, and Maya Maya is is out for the betterment of the cities and towns. I mean, that's, it, that's what that's they are. They, that's, that, what they that, that, that's what yeah, they do. That's what they do. So they, they have, they, they're looking out for the cities and towns in Massachusetts as well. So it's, I mean, it's tough. But, 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 when, but when, when we saw some of the co-pays going up and it, it was awful hard for us. And, and we didn't have anything to do about it. And we couldn't, no matter what we said, Hampshire was not willing to talk to us. So. And we're all employees <coughs> in each of our places, and we feel the same pinch in, yeah. in other ways. So, yeah, we know we're going all going through the same thing. So, I appreciate you raising the point because, again, it's 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 not very far in the future that something dramatic can change. And we did ask, we you know, we can't get a written guarantee, but we looked at all of that history going in, and it was an important factor in the decision. We didn't buy the sale price and then get dinged in a year. Right. Like that, uh, certain yeah. cable company. Oh, we'll give yeah, you exactly this right. lovely rate, and right. after Only two $99. years, <laughs> it triples or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Like the trash. Like, like the, trash. the trash. Exactly. Nice. Yep. Like the trash. Did, were, were you going to say that? I just wanted to say that it, it seemed like what happened. The reason we're moving away from Hampshire is because of the same. Some of the same questions we're having here. It seemed like Hampshire was worried and started spending down their reserves more and more and more trying to okay. adjust to things until suddenly they got to a point where that was untenable. And so instead of being, instead of timely creeping rate things here and there, the way a lot of the insurance companies have, they've had to suddenly push it all on at once. And suddenly, so that's what gives us this huge flag, it says. That's why I was bringing it up earlier. Yeah, exactly, because it's, it's the exact same problem. Yeah. And so. Yeah. <clears throat> it seems like a really convenient and apt comparison and a good good way to look at the two different choices that you have and right. what, what the possible results are. It's a kind of an interesting perspective as someone who doesn't participate in, in the <coughs> town health plan and pay, you know, I pay for my own. But the reality is I like that, that view. You participate at a municipal level in a different municipality. That's a nice view. And then you participate at the school committee level and can see you know, what, what, how, how disruptive change can be and the risk with change. And you know, I, 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 appreciate you, I appreciate that view and you bringing it forward. So uh, if anybody's interested, there's a, uh, <coughs> the Sunderland Town Democratic Committee is putting on a candidate's night down at the right. uh, Sunderland uh, Public Safety Complex Friday, this Friday evening from 7 to 9. They, I guess, from what I've, we've been told, is that all nine or ten or however many candidates, no way, really? what, this what, or eleven, however yeah, many candidates are running. Is it that many? There's a lot. They're they're I all going to be all nine the last they're all going to be at the, oh, yeah. they're going to be there. So if you want if you want an opportunity, I think it's from seven to nine, but at the at the uh, Sunland. Uh, I guess that again. Friday night. Friday at seven Friday p.m. Seven, Friday. seven Friday. to nine. Yep. So you can go straight from. Wait no. Oh, that's this Friday. Sorry, yeah. you can go from so, the one meeting to the other. But, yeah. but they'll, I mean, this will be the one of the first time all, all all the candidates will be together. That's true. Um, 
That's that high paying of a job, Tom? No. <laughs> just happens to, happen to be one. I, I asked, yeah, I, I, I actually we saw Steve Thursday night, last Thursday night, and we asked him, I said, Steve, why, how could you be giving up this great job? I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, 11, 10, 11 people running for the position. And uh, he said, well, democracy's uh, alive and well in the first Franklin, Hampshire. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, and that's why I, I, I think it's important because um, Steve, you said it earlier about about uh, how regional transportation's funding. Been fighting for that for a long time. Years. And 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 educate and 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 we don't we don't even think about it here, but but Steve was very good at bringing some of the the Boston legislators out to this area, and they don't understand what it means to uh, put a kid on a bus because they just don't do that in Boston. So. Or they don't do it often. So, and and now all of a sudden, when they come out here, and you look at Franklin County, and it's like, <laughs> how else do you get to school? You you don't. There there's very right. few. You know, when you look at percentage of people walking to school, it's so much smaller than in the city. So, so if, if you have a, an opportunity, it'd be very interesting to to get to meet the ten. It's this Friday, people, Tom. This Friday night. <laughs> gonna have to, they're going to have to hold it in the bays just for the number of candidates. Uh -huh. Open up the, <laughs> open them up. Well, and also I, in light of... 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock. I just thought I was, I was, I was, I was surprised when I saw the, uh, the pamphlet, I yeah. mean, the, the notice in there. I knew it was coming up, but I didn't mm -hmm. realize that they were having right. Maybe all, there. all 11. So if you're a Democrat, registered Democrat, or independent, or you're more than welcome, it said, it's, it's, or non-enrolled, they said, unenrolled, whatever it says. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said uh, the, that you're welcome to come. Well, and especially like the regional transportation thing is a, uh, also a big issue in light of the fact that there's more push to regionalize more things. So the more you regionalize, uh, transportation becomes an even bigger factor in it. So you also brought up that charter schools are now calling themselves regional charter schools in order to try to take a bite out of the pie. Yeah. Yes. But there's, yep. But Steve, we do this, Mr. Long. Yeah. Very effective. Uh, and okay. Anybody? Any other public comments? <coughs> All right. I've got some important dates here. We have an evening with Jim Barry, Friday, April thirteenth at six p.m. at the Sunderland Public Library. So you'll be able to hit that and go over to the candidates meeting. Our next meeting will be next Monday, April sixteenth, twenty eighteen. It'll actually be Tuesday because Monday's a holiday. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be Tuesday, April seventeenth, twenty eighteen, at six thirty. And the pre-town meeting open house, which you mentioned a few times, will be Friday, April 20th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Sunderland Public Library. Uh, and, and plus, we'd like some feedback, too, because this is the first time we're doing yeah. this, so we're trying different ways. And if anybody's got any other suggestions about getting information out to people I know, I've, I've heard from uh, folks saying that we need more emails, but we need less emails. So, you know, let us know what, whatever it is that we need, because <laughs> we're, we're glad to work with that. And our annual town meeting is Friday, April 27th, 2018, at 7 p.m. at the Sunderland Elementary School. Kate's yeah. taking up for you for retiring uh, moderator. I like it. Is it? Oh, hey. He's Big lying. Cake. I was going to say, he's, he's lying. lying. Yeah. He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> he's in that last Take your run late, Bob, then you won't have to buy much. <laughs> <laughs> Can we put a motion on the floor to, to draft him for the uh, contingency Next meeting one. if we need it? it. <laughs> do that. <coughs> Motion. Second. All those in favor for adjournment? Aye. 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 Thanks, Fcat. Thank you.